Hi everyone. The title of this talk is Axial DPLAP, Standalone Axial Attention for Panoptic Segmentation. My name is Hui Yu Wang, and this talk is presented by Johns Hopkins and Google Research. Convolution has been widely adopted in computer vision. It has been used as a standalone building block to build a fully convolutional neural network. The output feature Y at position O is simply the sum of linear projections of input XP. The kernel size M is usually limited to small local square regions. This makes it challenging to model long range relations. Recently, non-local neural networks, also known as self-attention, have been proposed to address this limitation. Contrary to convolution, non-local allows global connections in one layer. For example, here we show four frames of a video. The output of xi is the weighted average of the features from all positions. It captures long-range interactions with other faraway pixels xj in other frames. This complements convolution, which models local relations only. In non-local neural networks, the receptive field N contains all positions in an image, which means the output Y at any position O depends on the whole input image. The query, key, and the value are simply linear projections of the input X. The combination of keys and values in the whole image construct a key-value paired dictionary, and the query at position O can access this dictionary and retrieve the values. The values are weighted by the compatibility of the query and the keys associated with the values. This operation enables long-range interaction, but is also extremely expensive in terms of computation and memory. This quadratic cost limits its usage as a standalone model on large images. More recently, Standalone self-attention has been proposed. It constrains the reset field of self-attention to a local square region around O, similar to convolution. This makes self-attention efficient on large feature maps, and thus enables it to be used as a standalone building block. However, the local constraint makes it challenging again to model long-range relations. In this paper, we adopt axial attention, which splits one self-attention layer into two, one height axis attention followed by a width axis attention. The width axis attention operates in each row. It does not have access to pixels in another row. So it has to focus on long-range information within this row. Note that a message can always be passed globally on a 2D lattice with one hop on the height axis followed by another hop on the width axis. In this way, we are able to model 2D long range relations in a single module. Axial attention is more efficient than non-local. One can also optionally impose a local constraint M when the input is huge. But in practice, we always use a very large M since it does not introduce much extra cost. We will validate this choice with experiments. OK, now we ask a question. Is this axial attention all you need to build a good vision model? The answer is no. Although this non-local operation can aggregate global context, it has no idea where the context comes from. It throws away spatial orderings or structures of the pixels in the receptor field. This is not what we desire. Note that convolution is labeled to keep such spatial structures because its kernel weight depends on the relative position of the two pixels. A similar idea has been used in self-attention. People propose the relative positional encoding, R, which is a vector that indicates the relative position of two pixels. It could either be fixed or learnable, but it should be at least different when the relative position is different. Then, this blue term computes the compatibility of the query Q with the position R, so that the query can choose which value to retrieve based on its relative position. 
it models a query-dependent positional bias. This relates to deformable convolution, which learns the offset or relative position of convolution. However, there are obvious alternatives to it. One could exploit a key-dependent positional bias, which is dynamic with respect to the keys. Note that in long-range modeling, the query could be far away from the keys, which means they have very different information that can complement each other. One could also exploit a relative positional encoding added to values. This term enables content-based position retrieval in the sense that when Q and K are a good match, the output YO contains not only the value at position P, but also the precise relative position of it. In Axel Deep Lab, we simply combine all three terms since they are all cheap to compute and complement each other. We call this choice position-sensitive attention, and we'll show later that the additional terms help. To summarize, we are proposing a standalone alternative to convolution that can be used to build a backbone for vision tasks. It captures long-range relations together with spatial structures. Okay, now we ask this question again. Is this model all you need? We answer this question by building a standalone model with our axial attention only. Specifically, we replace all convolutions in a ResNet 50 by our position-sensitive axial attention and validate it on ImageNet classification. We change the number of channels so that our model has fewer parameters and flops, but we still observe that our axial attention performs better than both the baseline ResNet and any previous standalone self-attention models. Now we have confirmed that the answer is yes. This axial attention is all you need to build a good vision model. Then we further use it as a backbone for panoptic deep lab without changing other settings. We show results on panoptic segmentation, instance segmentation, and semantic segmentation. We first add our position sensitivity to standalone self-attention. We see around one point improvement across the three tasks. Switching to axial attention improves another one point on all tasks. Note that the axial backbone eliminates the need for ASPP. Using larger models can further help the results. Then we vary the recept fields of all axial attention layers. We notice that with a larger recept field, the computation increases marginally but the performance improves significantly from ResNet 101 to state-of-the-art. This confirms that long-range modeling is important. It also leads us to the state-of-the-art performance on Cityscape's test set, mapillary vistas, as well as cocoa bottom-up panoptic segmentation. We'll also observe the best semantic segmentation result on mapillary vistas. Note that this previous state-of-the-art uses AutoDplab XL++, which searches for a good architecture directly on this task. Next, we show some examples on cocoa panoptic segmentation. XLDplab captures both handles of this bike, thanks to its long-range modeling ability. It also captures the disconnected object in such challenging conditions, although the class doesn't seem correct. Here is another example. The overlapping instances of the same category could present a challenge to both bonding box-based and grouping-based methods, but Axel Deplab segments them correctly. In addition to standard benchmarks, we perform a scale stress test on COCO. We train models on one scale and directly test them on various output distribution scales. We observe a huge relative improvement over panoptic deep lab on both small and large scales. It shows that axial deep lab is robust to challenging scales. In conclusion, we have presented axial deep lab, which is a standalone axial attention model. It is good at modeling long range interactions and it captures precise positions at the same time. That's all. Thank you.